utilize an emergency halter, we have a piece of 3,200 pounds um, firefighter rescue rope here. We put a double figure eight in it, but in an emergency, any knot size type or knot will do. We just scratch the horse's friendship zone to let them know we're not intimidating them. We want to be friends. Drape this up over their neck. Catch the loop. Take the working end of your rope. Put it through your knot. This is a nice technique as it keeps us out of the vision, out of the way of their eye. Doesn't force any intimidation on them. We can take this, lead them around a little bit. We can get them off the road into a safe enclosure. We can't tie them to anything with this until we get a, a real halter and lead line on them. But this would at least get them off the highway and into a safe place. Lots of times when you're working with a horse you don't know, if you just scratch them right here, this is a bit of a friendship zone. Tells them that you want to be friends. It's where two horses will scratch together. Lots of times they'll nibble like, nuzzle like that. I'd like to show you now some large animal rescue techniques that your fire department might use to rescue your horse, either out of the back of an overturned trailer or a situation where he fell through a floor. We're going to use Willie as a demo here. This is just a cargo strap. We use them for towing cars. We put some webbing on it to help us put our carabiners in it. One thing we do in the fire service when we're rescuing people is we use the large muscle groups. And it's something that firefighters have to remember when they're rescuing large animals as well. A hoof is not a handle, the neck is not a handle, and lots of times horses have been rescued only to be put down because of so much injury. So we first put the strap over the large muscle groups, around the shoulders, over the withers, and we keep this nice and flat. We have a very patient horse here. In an extreme situation, your horse might not be quite so patient. But this is only to demonstrate how we put the ropes on, utilizing the large muscles. And then we have our carabiners and our mechanical advantage that we would hook into here to drag the horse forward. What I'd like to show you now is a variation on the forward assist. We call it a, a modified Swiss seat. We find the center of our cargo strap, come up around the horse's chest, cross the strap over their withers, keeping your center mark in approximate center of their chest. Ideally, you want to keep it as flat as possible as well. Then we go between their front legs and up through the chest strap. And what this does is, is allow us that advantageous advantage of utilizing the large muscle groups to drag the horse. We hook our carabiners into here and hook onto our mechanical advantage. The only disadvantage to this over the other style of forward assist is that if we have to abandon the rescue, something starts to go wrong, and we have to drop all this, this unfortunately doesn't fall off the horse where the other type of strap rack will on the forward assist. But this makes a nice, nice way to utilize it additional muscles. We could also, if we had to, put a carabiner in here, snap a carabiner in here, and use a lift to get a little bit more lift up over a bank or some other obstacle. What I have here is one of my favorite devices. I call it a rescue noodle. It's simply a child swimming pool noodle that we've cut into about of a third and strung a piece of 45 pound rescue webbing through it and tied it with a water knot. That's approximately a 12 foot piece of rescue webbing. And what we use this for is for stabilizing a horse's leg, securing it if we need to move it. It creates protection for the sensitive ligaments and tendons around the foot. We can steady a horse, uh, foot like this. We can put a closet hook or some type of contraption on here to hold it out of the way if we even need to get further away. Another advantage of this is if we have to, we can lift the horse's foot and either stage an owner or another firefighter holding on to it up over the horse's back. This way this noodle doesn't hurt these sensitive 
ligaments and tendons along here. A hoof is not a handle. We always need to remember that. Anytime we're working on a horse's hoof, we either have to pad, hold it with something like this, a rescue noodle, or put padding with duct tape, leg wraps, or some other thing on here if we're going to need to wrap that leg and move that leg. Another use of the rescue noodle is if you do have a horse that's down over a bank, maybe in swift water or cold water, and it's going to be a while before you can get there to get the horse extricated, we can take this, strap this over the horse's, under the horse's nose like that, and either strap it off to the bank or have someone monitor it, hold it, and this will give the horse something to rest into so he's not struggling keeping his head above water or out of the cold water. He can relax a little bit and save some of that in some of his heat and strength for keeping his body core temperature up. Continuing to work with our assist, forward assist, and backward assist. The backward assist is just the opposite of a forward assist. Same technique, but on the opposite end of the horse. This is ideal to use if you have a horse trapped in a trailer and the posterior end is extending out maybe under a roof collapse or something. There again, we have the center of the cargo strap marked. We drop it up over the horse's back, or we would have to weave it if we happen to be in a trailer situation. One technique I like to use is a cane or a pike pole closet hook if we happen to have that on a piece of fire apparatus or if your fire department is responding. This is just a walker's cane. It can be adjusted to different lengths. And to prevent yourself from having to put your hands down between the legs of a horse that you don't know, you can reach right in like this. Strap the cane. We're still in the kick zone. We're still in an area where we can get kicked. But these will reduce it a little bit. We can use the cane to pick up the strap ends. And ideally working with a horse that you don't know, the more safety equipment you can have on the better. But this is just to demonstrate how we utilize a large muscle mass. If you are involved, your horse is involved in a rescue and the fire department does show up, this is how we like to see them put on a backward drag. But for this demonstration, we're going to show blindfolding the horse. The jury's still out on whether this is a recommended practice and if I'm teaching horse owners to get their horse to be rescue ready, this is something that I highly encourage. My favorite choice of a blindfold is a long-tailed shirt. I like this for a variety of reasons, especially on lighter horses as, it, as the tail will come down over their nostrils and prevent any hostile ash or anything if we happen to have a, a fire and there's a lot of smoke or something in the air. The tail coming down over the nose will actually prevent some of the hostile gases and dust particles and ash from getting into the nostril horse's um, respiratory system. With draft horses, it's a little bit harder to find a shirt that'll work. This one doesn't do too bad, actually, on Willie. I like to take the sleeves, come right through this ring on here, can lock it in if we have to, like that, to keep it in place. Nice thing about this is it's nice and quick. Lots of times we have a couple shirts behind the back seat of our pickup trucks or in our horse trailers. And there again. If you're working with your horse, you do want to get them used to being blindfolded. We take ours, tie them with a whole hay bag. They're pretty uncommon. One great trick to having your horse be rescue ready. I'll also keep the glare if you happen to have a be on an emergency scene where we are using lights. Lots of times if we don't have scene lighting, the flashing lights and strobes and everything will upset some horses. We try to turn them off as much as possible on emergency scene, but this will help calm them a little bit. There again, get your horse used to this. They still can get lots of fresh air this way, but can keep some of the hostile gases and hot air out. And they can still eat. Another technique for blindfolding, if you don't happen to have a shirt handy, is just a towel. Just fold it in half. If it's large, then you may fold it in quarters. Come up under the halter, across the eyes. This doesn't give us any advantage to keeping hostile gases or dust particles out of their 
respiratory system as we don't have anything to come down over the nose. This has enough padding. We didn't, wouldn't have to double it. We can also come through here and lock in a little bit. There again, this is only one of many techniques that you could use. I also like to mention now too that if you do have an unconscious horse that happens to be recumbent and on its side, if you can get a towel and put some padding underneath these buckles and rings, it'll prevent some of the paralysis of the surficial nerves that run along the facial marks. Um, there again, the idea is to not cause any further injury to the animal. And uh, these are all techniques that'll help. With any, with any of these knots that you'll be using with your horses, there's lots of websites you can learn how to use them. For the double figure eight, we just make a bite, come down and around. We like this knot in the fire service as it doesn't lose as much strength as some of the other knots. Dress it up a little bit. And then this will be what we drop over the horse's withers, grab it on the other side, and we just grab this working end and pull it through the little loop. And then this becomes your emergency halter. Once we've placed a halter on a horse and we need to tie it to a secure structure, um, if we tie it to a horse trailer, always make sure the horse trailer is attached to a truck. It may be around a tree branch if it's strong enough or other, other, any type of apparatus or whatever we can find to a tie that's secure enough to tie the horse to. There are several types of quick release knots. My preferred one is just to take this, loop it around twice. The second time we loop, we actually push the loop through the knot. And we can, act, we can further lock it, but then we kind of lose most of the ability for it to be quick release if we do that. Horses will sometimes quickly learn that it's a quick release knot and actually take their lips and pull this and let themselves loose. So once again, just loop it. And the second time around, push your loop through there. Then you can snug it up. And if you do want the added security, just loop that through there again. Just remember, on a quick release, if you've done that, it's not quite so quick release because you do have this one extra step of taking that before you can release it. Okay. And there again, this is just one of the many ways that you can make a quick release. It's my preferred method. Let me just hook our snap into our horse there. We have them blindfolded. We can leave them on the trailer, attached to the tree or whatever. One technique I'd really like to encourage is to make sure whoever's leading your horse, whether it's you or a guest at your farm or on a trail ride, make sure we're not looping the lead line around our hands like this. We want to make sure whoever's leading our horses doubles them up, holds them away like this. The proper leading of your horse, when it looped and not doubled around your hand or wrapped around your hand. The other thing I'd encourage is teaching your horse to lead from both sides. And every horse can learn to lead from both sides. Makes a more balanced horse. And if your horse ever does have to be in a rescue situation, most firefighters won't know that your horse is used to being led from the left. So teach your horse to lead from both sides and your horse will always be rescue ready. Mm -hmm.